Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 here in uh, Norderiki with the Historical Immersion Project mod. So uh, last time we just helped our dynasty member, the newly appointed King of Saxony, win a war. And now we are kind of facing this here uh, adventurer threat, which if I remember rightly we were trying to resolve by plotting to murder the dude, but that doesn't seem to be... Uh, working, we're a little below 100%. Um, I think, did I already bribe some of these guys? I think I might have bribed this guy. Yeah, so he's not going to join. So, uh, that's only at 99%. We'll keep an eye on it, I suppose, until um, closer to October, when he's going to launch his invasion. So let's go ahead and unpause for a little while. Uh, we can, of course, also uh, assassinate him, but we don't have the money to do that just at the moment. Uh, we can take loans, I suppose. Um, oh, okay. King of Perm has created a, another kingdom title for reasons unknown. That might be a bad idea, actually, because um, I'm not sure if he's under Gavelkind. He is under Gavelkind. Why would you do that? To look like a big man in front of all your vassals. Ooh, I've got two kingdom titles. Um, so it's our kinsman, of course, that is the heir to Perm. So now he's going to end up inheriting probably a smaller kingdom. Actually, no, he'll inherit both as it is right now. Because he's the sole male child here. So the gavel kind isn't going to cause a problem for him yet. Well, that's fine, I suppose. The vagrants in your new inn have been evicted, the holes in the roof have been patched, and the whole building has been thoroughly aired out to cleanse it of the most offensive odours. New staff has been hired, and the time has come for you to decide on a name for your inn. Eh, uh, well, let's go with the Drunken Squire. That's pretty good. Uh, this is, of course, is our, is our stewardship improving event chain here. Uh, things are very busy at your new inn, with everyone preparing for the grand opening night. Guests will be able to sample turnips for free, but if you add a generous amount of salt to them, people might become more thirsty and meat sales would increase. Um, we had 20% salt. It's like the, um, the food stalls from Theme Park. Yeah, add extra salt to make the guests buy more drinks. Probably dating myself with a reference to an extremely old game there. Uh, seeing another woman behind my spouse's back is becoming quite troublesome for me. The lies tear at my soul, and my longing to be with my lover is almost too much. Um, two male children? I guess it's fine if we become chaste. That doesn't really matter at this point. We didn't anyway, so that's good. Your inn will soon be open to the public, but one last detail demands your attention before the opening night. Some form of act or spectacle will need to be booked to keep the guests around. After scouring the lands for what passes for entertainment, you conclude that the following options are available to you. A travelling band from distant lands, uh, a renowned eunuch castrato singer, or a wild ass that allegedly speaks and recites poetry. Hmm. Well, this is the cheapest option. Let's book the wild ass. Uh, okay, good. So I've kind of also been considering um, about possibly ending this series soon because it's uh, not only running on an old version of the HIP mod, which is before the um, EMF module has been added. You can't update cause to, that, to the one with that module because it breaks the save games. Um, but you just continue after this. The wild ass sat on the grand stage of your inn for the better part of an hour, and although it relieved itself twice on the wooden floor, no speech or poetry was forthcoming. To your horror, the agitated animal ra then ran amok amongst the audience, resulting in fleeing customers and four broken tables. Oh, well, it turned out to be more expensive. Although that sounds pretty entertaining to me. They told me it spoke. But yes, it's not only running on an outdated version of the uh, mod, it's now an outdated version of CK2 itself since the uh, Charlemagne DLC and Associated patch came out. 
Uh, my wife was, captivate, was captivated by the grace and strength of the hunting birds and begged me for a bird. Uh, well, sure, we'll buy her a falcon. And my inn was pretty successful, and I earned lots of gold and some stewardship, so that's good. So I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do is to play up until the next Great Holy War, which um, I can't remember when that was exactly, but it's in the not-too-distant future. Uh, if we look at the history of the Kingdom of France here, I guess it's probably uh, February 1039 will be when we can declare another Holy War. So I'll probably um, do that Holy War probably against Aquitaine, since it's the largest easily accessible target. France will help me out, of course, and we'll have a jolly war together. And I'll probably end it after that. Unless, of course, uh, this whole adventurer thing robs me of my empire before that, which I guess is possible. Now and then, I like to sneak out at dusk and watch the sun as it sets in the sky. Okay, that's good. So yes, I think we will probably do that and go out on a warlike note. So we just had succession in Perm here, so now we have our kinsman, who unfortunately is not uh, Asatru. Oh, and in fact, all of his children have died, or his siblings are dead. Um, and his heir is not of his or our dynasty. Let's hope he gets to impregnating his wife pretty soon. But yes, we have a we have a dynasty member now uh, over in Perm, so they should be allies that we could call. They won't join in our holy war. Unfortunately, we have dangerous factions now too. Um, Prince Ophig that is quite the dangerous faction. Why are you in this faction, King of Norway? You have a hundred opinion. That is ridiculous. Stop being a jerk. Uh, but yes, this uh, adventurer. It looks like our. To the Queen of Finland, good lord. Anyway, uh, it looks like our plot is not going to fire. We are still short of being able to afford even a single assassination attempt. I wonder, should I take a loan? Actually, I'll ransom it whatever prisoners I can first. See if we can get up to enough money to make at least one attempt at an assassination. dismiss all those messages. And we can indeed make one attempt at assassination. Where is this guy? He's um, Ostersjaland, which is here. So he's just hanging about in my court, collecting up his army to attack me, which, you know, seems weird to me, but whatever. And let's see. Um, it's Scheme, isn't it? I don't remember which one it is. No. Build Spy Network. There we go. Okay, we have a 41% chance of success. Not too bad. Let's go for it. Excellent. Well, that takes care of that problem anyway. We'll probably go up to speed 4. Uh, okay, died of pneumonia. And my seer died. Okay, let's see where we need to convert still. Oh, very little, actually. I'm not sure, I think we might have given away some of our uh, Slavic land down here to King of Saxony, so took care of that problem. I guess we'll send him over here to proselytize. I'm going to have to deal with this faction. That really, the King of Norway here should not be in. Now, let's see. 
disgruntled about anything in particular. Not really. But these is worth the most opinion. The little speaker. I won't get him out of the faction, I guess, but um, maybe it'll help a little. Uh, we can actually imprison the King of Norway. Or the King of Svithiod, actually. Um, hmm. I don't think we still have the opinion bonus for capturing and releasing a... a uh, vassal. Mm. Nope. Doesn't look like it. So I think what I'll do is capture and release the King of Svithiod. That will give everyone an opinion bonus. Except for the King of Svithiod, of course. But he doesn't matter. So he is reigning in Saxholm, in his capital. Let's go ahead and... Oh, can I no longer... move these guys immediately? Oh no, wait, anyway, it's the uh, Marshal that does... A rest chance anyway, so that's good. Um, imprison, 77% chance. Excellent. Let's release from prison. Everyone's opinion goes up by 20. And just like that, our dangerous faction is a little less dangerous. Well, my son needs a guardian. Let's see if we can use him to appease somebody somewhat. Uh, this guy. Okay, that seems good. Oh. Emerge from the dungeons covered in grime and with a bloody knife. So I guess I only have this option presumably because I'm kind myself. And he became kind. So that's nice. Uh, let's check on the King of Saxony. What is he doing? Probably um, his holdings will still have... Well, they at least don't have newly conquered, so he's getting some levy and money and so forth from them. Point to steward, collect taxes in the capital. Um, I can move my spymaster back to studying technology now. I will do. Oh, is this Saxony? What is, what is he up to? Oh, good. He's attacking somebody. Uh, the Duchess of Franconia. Hopefully he pulls me in. King of France has declared a holy war for Anjou. Okay, um, my vassals are also meeting to discuss my rule. So Anjou is over here. Presumably the Jarldom of Anjou. Oh, only this one county that he doesn't already have. Hardly really seems worth it, but carry on, I suppose. Uh, yeah, of course I'll accept. Uh, you do not need to conscript merchant ships. Let's see. Bavaria, the Pope, and Swabia in this war. Nothing too uh, scary just yet. Let's just head in with our retinue for the moment. See if we can use that to good effect without having to actually raise any other troops. Um, okay, good. So I see 5,000 or so already there. I'd better raise some troops, I suppose. Let's raise Norway. Is it for the moment? Oh, 
thousand Bavarian men here. Where's he headed to? Dannenberg. Let's go to Dannenberg from somewhere. I don't know. Alright, well, it looks like he's going to try and engage this army, which, if he does, we'll swoop in and help. Um, oh good, France called Permian. Which is nice. They can help each other out, not that they're likely to be that much help because they're so distant, but it's still nice to see our little created or um, converted kingdoms helping each other out. So we also have Sorbs in this war now. Oh, and France is in this war too, so that's that's also good. We don't actually need to do that much help though, I guess France will be concentrating on his possibly foolish holy war. Mm -hmm. My vassals are becoming displeased. Let's go ahead and jump in against this Bavarian army. Nope. Or not. Okay, King of Svithyot died. And he is sieging the war goal, which is good. Let's go and... Um, try and engage this army, I think. fighting somebody else. Which is actually fine by me. What happened to France? Did he lose his army already? How did he lose his entire army of 12k? That is ridiculous. I can only assume it was Aquitaine. Hmm, they're a bit depleted, so they might have just won a huge battle there, I suppose. Um, okay, let's move. Let's see. We'll put uh, half of you in there and advance half of you over here. Put this army over here. We'll just siege some territory for the moment, and I'm ill. Probably won't die. Still pretty young and healthy. Not really seeing any large armies around. This is the Pope's army here. Looks like he's um, got some reinforcements. I'm going to win that battle, actually. And indeed, I didn't die. We want to siege. He has sieged the top holding there. Not the other ones, though, for some reason. Smallpox. It's pretty bad. Okay, so this is Papal State Bavaria. Basically all of our uh, enemies in this war. I think I'll finish this siege here and then try and engage them. Oh, he's coming in himself. Even better. Let's see then. Um, yeah, he is going to cross a river to do that, so that's great. I'll just uh, let him, I suppose. Uh, let's get leaders appointed. And, yeah, there he goes. Uh, let's get our other armies in as quickly as possible. Uh, don't go through that army. I'll slow you down. Yep, looks like uh, Saxony is coming in to help too. 
which is nice of him. This is it the least he can do since we're here winning his war for him? And we won that without much problem at all. So let's go ahead and disperse back to those three counties and keep sieging them. Uh, I opened the stable door a bit quick and accidentally stumbled in on Dag getting his first kiss. I suddenly realized Dag is becoming a man. Um, oh, he became chased. Well, that's uh, perhaps a little unfortunate. Probably not a huge deal, though. But that is going to do it for this episode, so thanks for watching and join me again next time where we will hopefully win this war.